Hey there, trust our fans. Welcome to probably the weirdest to date episode of our newsreel. This would be uh, number 79. Uh, we've got a gem packed show with the latest on crypto's starring role at the recent G20 summit and updates on regulations, partnerships, and new projects in the space. Uh, just to give you a taste, crypto took center stage at the G20 summit last week. Regulators like the IMF and the uh, FSB, uh, uh, financial security board that is, that's not Russian security service, are pushing for tighter controls and oversight. While some see this as positive for legitimizing the industry, cynics like yours truly warn of impending overreach. Uh, speaking of overreach, Binance just can't seem to catch a break. The embedded exchange saw several more key executives run for the hills this month amid ongoing regulatory woes. Visa and MasterCard also cut ties with Binance's card programs. No good no good at all. In other news, corporate accounting in the US is getting an upgrade to uh, accurately capture crypto holdings. Uh, very important, but not very sexy news in my book. Uh, Visa is dipping its toes in USDC, and Argentina's potential next president is cozying up to Bitcoin, though. To me, his policies are nothing but red flags, so we'll talk about that. On the entertainment front, Justin Bieber is shilling his old hits as NFTs, and a new crypto version of The Apprentice just hit YouTube. And if you thought this was enough weirdness to you, just watch to the end. I'm sure you know all about the G20 summit that was in the headlines all throughout the last week. And this time around, crypto received some major attention. No more kidding around. In the coming years, the entire ecosystem is going to be re-centralized, tightly regulated, and put to work for the man. Uh, I encourage you to read the whole of the G20 final de uh, final declaration. It's only 37 pages, uh, minus intro, table of contents, references, and so on. So it's not too long. But I guarantee you'll get some chills if you know how to read between the lines. Uh, digitalization, CBDCs, crypto assets are all major talking points now. Uh, the marginal niche nature of crypto be gone. Nowadays, regulators with global influence like the IMF, the Financial Stability Board, um, and others are getting their hands dirty, so to speak, with crypto, calling for comprehensive regulation of the crypto sector to mitigate risks, namely a joint synthesis paper from the International Monetary Fund and the Financial Security Financial Stability Board on crypto regulations drafted by India's G20 Secretariat, proposes common standards for crypto regulation across G20 nations, more customer verification, disclosure requirements, and registration of crypto service providers. I mean, the report notes that a complete ban could push activity underground and stifle innovation. Stifle innovation. Uh, instead, they want to regulate, harness benefits, and manage risks. Uh, and judging by the final declaration, all G20 members agree with the approach. Read the paper, read the final declaration. I'll leave both links in the description. It's a doozy. Uh, a key talking point in the crypto community has been the ongoing exodus of executives from Binance amid growing regulatory troubles. Uh, Binance has seen the departure of 10 key executives from various departments in the first nine months of 2023. Uh, the latest to join the list is Helen High, Executive Vice President of Binance, who announced her resignation from her post on September 6th. Uh, on the same day, Glad Kosterov, uh, Vice President of Eastern Europe, uh, Turkey, and, common, and the Commonwealth of Independent States, Australia, and New Zealand, and Binance, also announced his resignation, as did CIS General Manager Vladimir Smirkis. CIS is, well, yeah, the Commonwealth of the Independent States, that former, uh, that's former Soviet Union, and all those names are Russians, so you do the math. The four top executives from Binance reportedly all left on the same day after Binance's response to the United States Department of Justice investigation. Yeah, I can see that these people don't want to have anything to do with Binance. They're probably already sanctions up, sanctioned up to yin yang, so they don't want any more more of that. Probably criminal investigations are coming. Uh, Binance CEO Chengpeng Zhao has hosed down recent rumors against his firm, assuring its balance sheet and employee retention remain robust despite the recent market uncertainty. Uh, this is extremely hard to believe given that recently both MasterCard and Visa stepped back from their card partnership with uh, uh, Binance Holdings. Visa stopped issuing new co-branded cards with Binance in Europe as of July and MasterCard will end its card partnership with Binance entirely in September. Uh, this alone may mean that I'm about to win the pool we kind have going on in the office, some of my trusted co-workers, you know, about whether or not Binance will make it to Christmas this year. I even made a video on that, so check out our TikTok and sign up if you haven't already. <laughs> uh, the former CEO of Turkish crypto exchange Thodex, uh, Faruk Fatin Ozar, Ozar, uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing his name right, uh, was sentenced to 11,196 years in prison by a Turkish court 
on charges of uh, establishing, managing, and being a member of an organization, a qualified fraud, and laundering of uh, property values. So I don't know what that means. Uh, the court gave Ozer and his two siblings the same jail sentence and a $5 million fine. Uh, to be the overtly outlandish sentence looks like a little something to appease the public, while the relatively manageable fine looks more like a bribe, as in spend some time in jail, and when things come down, we'll let you out quietly. Uh, anyway, the exchange was one of the country's largest digital asset trading platforms uh, before it abruptly imploded in 2021, halting services without prior notice. Ozer uh, fled Turkey with the uh, user's assets totaling $2 billion in crypto. You know the drill. Vitaly Buterin, the awkward face of Ethereum, allegedly, had his Twitter account hacked. Apparently, the incident has led to victims collectively losing over $699,000 worth of all kinds of digital junk after clicking on a malicious link and having their precious NFTs drained after a series of clicks. Uh, the most valuable NFT pilfered so far is CryptoPunk number 3983, worth apparently 153 ETH, equivalent to approximately 250,000 real dollars. I gotta say, these people take losses like that surprisingly well. I mean, if I had lost 250 grand, I'd be suicidal. I mean, the only explanation I can find is, is the same old, same old, I told you so, it's not real money, people. It's not real money. Also, I'm wondering what the assailant's gonna do with all that, all those punks and apes and all that other BS they stole. I mean, if that pixelated chain pops up on the grid with a for sale sign, how are you gonna know if it's the real one? And if it's as uniquely connected to a unique address, can it be traced to the thief easily? I mean, my guess is these guys are just having fun because they can, because in Alfred's words, Some men just wanna watch the world burn. And that's basically what they're doing anyway, moving on. Uh, Visa said on Tuesday that it would begin to send USDC, the second largest stablecoin by market cap, to select merchants via, via the Solana blockchain in a newly announced pilot. Uh, while credit card holders can buy goods with a mere swipe, of, a swipe or tap, Visa facilitates a complicated dance of payments in the background to enable every transaction. Uh, after purchase, the cardholder's bank wires money to Visa's treasury, from which Visa pulls the funds and sends them to the merchant's bank. Uh, what amazes me is that despite the promise of stablecoins to speed up bank transfers, the processing time to transfer money in or out Visa's treasury will remain the same says Kai Sheffield, he's his uh, uh, head of crypto. So the point of this song and dance of payments and the reason behind involving Solana remains a mystery to me. Why do it? I have no idea. Tucker Carlson had just dropped a huge hint that Bitcoin may be getting a potentially massive political boost in yet another Latin American country, Argentina. Uh, announcing an upcoming interview, Tucker showed himself off to his 10 million followers, bro-hugging Argentina's presidential candidate, Javier Malay, whose pro-Bitcoin stance is pure honey to the crypto community's ear, calling Malay enemy of the Washington Post and probably the next president of Argentina. Unfortunately, on top of complete Bitcoin illiteracy, illiteracy that is, Javier Malay's political agenda is not much different from that of Augusto Pinochet's uh, iron fist and austerity in the social sector, complete decentralization and private money ruling the economy everywhere else. Uh, personally, I think his signature mix of far right and far left positions for the country amid a major financial and social crisis should alarm Bitcoinists rather than cause jubilation. Oh well, forgive them for they do not know what they're doing. Luke 2334. Uh, in a desperate attempt to stay relevant, Justin Bieber is turning his 2015 chart-topping song Company into an NFT. My view of this thing is that you should feel insulted. It's not even a new song. Uh, the blockchain-based music platform Another Block is partnering with uh, Andreas Schuller, the co-producer of the song, to release 2,000 NFTs. These tokens are not just digital uh, collectibles, but also revenue-generating assets that will allow fans to earn a portion of the song's streaming royalties. The more tokens a fan holds, the larger the share of future streaming. Future is key here. Future streaming royalties uh, they will earn. So apparently the way this is supposed to work is first you buy however many tokens are available to you out of 2,000 editions at $28 a piece, and then wait until each NFT earns you uh, 0.0005% royalties when companies streamed on services like Spotify, Apple Music, and Tidal, among others. Uh, so, so many questions. Uh, someone on Twitter has done the math on the potential earnings, which are not great, as you can imagine, but uh, that's not even the main point here. Of course, we all heard about artists being duped, underpaid, and flatly refused payment by these greedy bastards. So my guess is whoever wants to stream this almost nine-year-old track, just be aware that you simply have no real legal recourse here. Uh, in other words, if Spotify really wanted to share with artists and consumers, they could have built a revenue sharing scheme a long time ago with no NFTs needed. So 
they can do what you will. Uh, here's something interesting. The uh, uh, three Croatian firms have launched a Go Agro platform, offering investors the opportunity to buy crypto pigs in the form of NFTs, priced at 250 euros each, equivalent to 100 kilograms of pork meat. A total of 240,000 pig NFTs are to be issued, uh, maturing over 900 days. Uh, after this period, investors can choose to uh, either reinvest, uh, sell, or convert their pig NFTs into 107.5 kilograms of real pork meat. So I guess your pig dividend here is uh, seven and a half kilograms or about 15 pounds of meat in two years. What am I missing here? Uh, the proceeds will be used to uh, kickstart pig farming on two agroporks owned farms. Um, apparently the project's goal is to uh, directly connect farmers and consumers, addressing the decline in pig farming, especially in Croatia, where recent outbreaks of African swine fever have severely affected production. I must say, I've just returned from Croatia where I spent a month going restaurant to restaurant, and I assure you, whatever short, shortage of pork they're experiencing, they hide it very well. So, I don't know. And finally, if you ever wondered, uh, when is The Apprentice coming to crypto? Wonder no more. It's here in the form of a new show called The Next Crypto Jam. I'd say the most interesting thing about it is that big boy Ben Armstrong, recently ousted from his alma mater at Hit TV, is somehow billed as one of the guest stars on the show. Uh, he doesn't appear in the pilot, aired on YouTube on September 10th, though. I guess we have that pleasure to look forward to. The show will pit contestants against one another in challenges to win a prize package estimated to be worth $150,000. Whether it'll be actual US dollars or digital assets of some sort remains to be seen. I'm sure it's not going to be real dollars. The show will feature well-known crypto influencers Brian D. Evans, uh, Leia Halpern, and George Tung, who happens to be the show's executive producer, as judges. And after viewing the pilot, I must honestly say that these are some of the least charismatic people in crypto. Uh, as for the message, it's the same bullshit about bringing people in crypto closer together, adoption, education, and blah, blah, blah. Uh, the reality, of course, is much more cynical. From what I could see, the difference between The Apprentice, the Sharks, or whatever it's called, uh, and other TV garbage that's on there, is that The Apprentice is mostly targeting VCs, whereas the show, the, the next crypto jam, will heavily affect the retail investor sector, whether it likes to admit it or not. Uh, but the um, oversimplification of crypto has never served the community well, and I foresee a number of lawsuits in the future based on the you know, the dog made me do it indictment that didn't help David Berkowitz, the infamous mania killer, nor will it help the poor soul who will decide to invest in a project touted by the next crypto gem. So lots of ruminations, lots of tears, lots of pity. Um, I don't think it's going to be pretty, but I think that show is not going to last even one season. They'll probably release a couple episodes and just drop it. I don't know. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace.